engine's painted. Still waiting on fasteners, basically all the bolts for the engine. I ordered new stainless steel ones so that for the outside anyway, so that they won't corrode and they'll look kind of fancy. Um, they're not in yet, so we kind of switched gears, no pun intended, to uh, the rear end. Before we get into the rear end stuff, I'll go ahead and give you a, a look at the engine that we have mocked up the way that it'll look when we actually put it together. It's pretty hot. Well, here's what it's going to look like. We've got the uh, flat black Edelbrock stuff, the valve covers and the uh, air filter, that aluminum Edelbrock intake, and up in there is the 600 Edelbrock electric trope carburetor. Paint came out nice. pretty. Went ahead and splurged and spent the four dollars on some uh, valve cover stickers to identify the engine displacement. Really really happy with the way it looks. If it runs half as good as it looks then we're in business. And hopefully it does because it cost a thousand dollars to get it to run the way it's gonna run and only cost like 30 bucks to make it look like this so <laughs> fingers crossed so the truck originally had pretty much the wimpiest rear end setup that we could have hoped for it was an open differential which meant not positive traction or track lock as Ford calls it um, which meant it only just pushed with one wheel instead of putting power to both wheels all the time and it had 300 gears, which are a highway gear. Good for gas mileage, not good for much low-end torque or anything, which is kind of what the truck's being built for. So we found uh, a place down uh, 60 miles south of St. Louis called Custom Differentials. And man, do they have everything. It's a cool setup. Check them out. They have a website and everything. Uh, the guy does work all over the country, so if you need something, he can probably hook you up. Anyway, I went and traded mine in for the core and paid a reasonable price for a complete third member dropout. This is the third member. It has all the gears and stuff. Differentials are confusing, like transmissions, so if you know what you're doing, you can get inside them, but if you don't, you shouldn't. So that's why we just had the entire third member swap. Um, it's a 31 spline axle, like mine is. This is 350 gears, which has got more low end. It's not super low, but a lot better than the 300 gears. And it's positive traction, track lock differential. So, so right now I'm cleaning up the uh, rear end housing so that I can pop this third member back up in place of where I took mine out. Didn't have the camera yesterday when I took it out, so I couldn't show the removal. Basically, you have to pull the drums off, pull the axles out, and then just take all the bolts off the third member and, and pull it out. It's pretty heavy, a lot of sweat, not that complicated, just a little bit annoying, I guess. So I'll try to film us getting it put back up in there. I uh, probably won't film myself cleaning up the gasket surface because that's pretty self-explanatory. But we'll at least get some footage of putting it up in there and putting it back together to make up for the lack of removal footage. And I'll uh, show you what it looks like. All right, there it is. See this on the sides? This is where the uh, axles go in on either side. If you look up inside there, that's how you can tell that it's 31 spline. You could actually count that if you wanted to. So something that we realized when I went to trade mine in was that the yoke on mine was pretty trash. I had to buy a new one. That is uh, this part right here. And mine had broken off some of the metal here. So this is a brand new yoke that they hooked me up with for a pretty good price. And they put it on for me right there. So this is what hooks to the drive shaft, and when it spins, it spins that. So now we're going to be putting power to both. You can see this turns this way inside, and the other one will turn the same. This rear end is filled with uh, gear oil. Uh, the guys at Custom Differential said to just put 80-90 in, which is what this is, with a uh, GL level of 5, which, I don't know if you can read it or not, but that's GL5. They said, on something this old, the old Ford 9 inches, don't bother getting anything synthetic, you're just wasting money. And with the track lock, posi track differential, they gave me this to put in. They said to put this in there and then top it off with the 8090. So that's what we're going to do. 
Also, I was told by them and other people uh, that if you use the gasket for this, that's pretty much a fast track to uh, leaking. Uh, so they also gave me a tube of this gasket maker, and I'm just going to use that instead because uh, I don't want it to leak. So this whole thing folds right up to where that big hole is up there. As you can see, the whole third member plugs right up into there. It's nice and clean inside, which is a good sign. This is gonna get lifted up, put in there, and bolted in. To get to it, you had to remove the drum, which takes some oomph, and then uh, pull the, unbolt the axle bearings, and then just pull the whole axle out. You can see it's laying over there on that tire. So you gotta pull those out before you can put it in, and then once we put it back in, we can put those back in. So that's what I'm gonna do today. Lock third member swap complete.